You are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast, Mediocre Moments, Volume 7, the best of Season 2. TNT. Yeah, boy. Uh, this is all the stuff we talk about that has to do with AI taking over the world, technology oh. advancements, all of this. Yeah, I hope this puts everybody at uh, at ease. Yeah, I'll be nightmares for days or after this one. Unease, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, I yeah, bet you can't wait. Enjoy the show, everybody. Welcome to another special episode of the Crazy Town Podcast, Mediocre Moments, Volume 7, the best of Season 2. My name is Jonas, I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite, the explosive one, TNT, D-I-N-O-M-I-T-H-T, girl, girl, (laughs) girl, Girl, you know it's true. (laughs) Thank you all for listening again to the rehash clip shows of season two in between our seasons. Make sure you follow us on Twitch. Our season three is going to be live. Twitch.tv forward slash Crazy Town Media. We also are on YouTube. Our channel is Crazy Town Media. All of our gaming videos, podcasts, and other. Also on Twitter at Crazy Town Media. You can get all the news you need there. TNT. Yeah, man, what's up? We had so many articles this year about self-learning AI, AI taking over the world. We did a lot of discussion about you, this. You might as well accept it, man. They're, yeah. they're the new, the new, uh, the new us. That's the our new normal. That's our next step in evolution. Let's see what's all coming up on here. Self-learning programs that beat humans. Yeah, yeah. better uh, than us. We talk about Alexa's ulterior motives. You said her name too loud. Yeah, I know she's gonna hear us. Uh, we talk about uh, new. Uh, God, I can't even think of the word right now. The, uh, it's, uh, blah, blah. When you okay. lose an arm, you get a new, uh, prosthetic. Prosthetic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can't even think of the word. Sarcophagus. Sorry, yeah, right. Yeah, for Skargogogersk. Yes. So we get into all that, and, uh, it's fucking frightening. Mm-hmm. Getting our houses hacked. A little bit. Oh, there's, Jesus. There's some scariness in here. Yeah, for sure. It's all together. Depressionzone.com. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a real website. It should be our website. Yeah, right. <laughs> should be my own personal bedroom's website. Oh, singer. All right. We'll go ahead and listen to all this, and we'll be back at the end to wrap it all up. Where am I? Have you ever heard of the complex Chinese board game called Go? I have heard of this, actually. It's fucking crazy. Have you? Okay. Well, for, the people, for the people at home, this game is like three or 4,000 years old. And yeah, it's a correct. very, it's a, I get, I mean, the, that, the concept of the game is simple, but there, there's very much strategy to it. Um, the game, I guess it's kind of, sort of closest to would be Othello, if anyone's ever played Othello, where you have the white and black pieces, and you like, as you place them on the board, you can like, take over other people's pieces, and whoever has the most takeovers and board coverage wins. Basically, you try to, like, surround your opponent's pieces with your pieces, and you can capture them, and basically that's it. I mean, there's a shitload to it, but that's the basic gist of it. All right. Okay. What was cool about this game is up until a a couple years ago, about a little over a year ago, they weren't able to create... Uh, an AI or even computer program that could beat a human. Humans could always still beat the programs in this particular game. Really? Yes. The oh. first, the first program that ever beat it was on March 15th, 2016. It was called Alpha Go Lee was the AI. It was the first AI to ever beat a world champion. Alpha Go Lee. Alpha Go Lee. L-E-E. Oh. Um, oh, that's right. important because there's going to be another one I'm going to talk about in a second. So. Lee had to study millions of hum- – they, they gave him millions of examples of human expert world champion moves before it started playing games with itself. So the AI st- – uh. they, gave, they gave it like a knowledge base of human moves 
Then they had this, then they had AlphaGo Lee play games against itself. Hmm. And then eventually they had him play the world champion and he beat the world champion. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So there, now there's a new program. It was called AlphaGo Zero. Oh shit, that sounds fucking cyborg like, as hell. Like Crash Override from the movie Hackers. <laughs> Zero Cool, bruh. <laughs> fucking Serial Killer. Math- Matthew Lillard. Angelina <laughs> Jolie when she still looked like a fucking little boy when she had no boobs and short hair. <laughs> You ever seen that movie? And not at all. If you want to see Angelina Jolie before plastic surgery, go I watch this. That. Go Wait, watch I saw what is she in that one movie where like she was like naked and shit? Oh, the model, like Gia? Was that it? Yeah. So that... this movie was even before that one. Oh, she geez, literally no. in this movie, she is as flat chested as a, a fucking wall. <laughs> <laughs> as a wall. Go look, look up, look up Angelina Jolie in Hackers. It doesn't even look anything like she looks like, to, other than like those big lips. That's it. Anyways, off topic. <laughs> the Angelina Jolie eight. <laughs> You're gonna have her fans kill us. Yeah, they're gonna be like, like, "Fuck the Crazy Town podcast." They hate on Angelina because she had a bunch of stuff done, and now she's doing stuff and stuff. It's off. Yeah, that's a, that sounds about what's all like. Yeah, that's what happens. Thing. Anyways, AlphaGo Zero. AlphaGo Zero started from scratch. Mm. No study of human moves. They programmed the program on how to play the game, and immediately just had it start playing against itself. Okay. So it, it was just making, at first, it was just making random moves. But the way they programmed Zero compared to the other one, after each move, it would use past experience of practice games to imagine possible scenarios that could play out moving forward. So it was almost like trying to premeditate the future as it was playing. Okay. All right. So Lee, AlphaGo Lee also used this kind of thought process, but only versus humans, not when it was playing practice games. So it didn't have the, it didn't have the cognitive ability to think about what had happened in the past unless it was playing humans. Huh. But, yeah, I know, right? It's crazy how you can program the AI. So this technique not only allowed Zero to train faster, but to become a better player. Yeah, I'd imagine so. In three days, Alpha Go Zero played 4.9 million games against itself. That's so fucking crazy. It taught itself how to play so well, they pitted up against Alpha Go Lee, and Alpha Lee Zero beat Alpha Go Lee 100 games to zero. And Alpha, wow. and Alpha Go Lee was the only AI that ever had beaten a human master or a human world champion in the world. Wow, so Alpha Go Zero fucking won the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, he would be like, yeah, he would be like the undisputed. He like, he like shit on Alpha Lee, pushed him down, fucking kicked him, spit on him. And then Alpha Lee makes the humans look like a bitch. So we're like third string behind Alpha Go Zero and Alpha Go Lee. Yo, AI is pretty fucking scary. Well, check out what this happened though. It said, while Zero practiced, Mind you, this game is three to four thousand years old. Mm. It, it on its own figured out many strategies used by world champions. Like he figured out strat, like the AI figured out strategies humans use to play this game. And he also, three to four year, thousand years after it had started, discovered new strategies never before used by a human player. Really? So the article said basically AlphaGo Zero. To a world champion to AlphaGo Zero is basically a novice, like someone who's never picked up the game before, because he's so advanced now at this game. That's crazy. But they call it, I mean, they basically call him an idiot savant because it, it can't do anything but play Go and learn how to play Go. <laughs> yeah. But the reason <laughs> I wanted to talk about takes this. takes over the world. Right. The reason I wanted to talk about this story if they can put this technology into, like, a general purpose problem-solving AI, holy shit, dude. Like, 
this this thing was programmed to play Go. But if if mm. you can get an AI that's programmed to just like be a a problem solving machine in general, yeah. What what problem would you have it solve? Oh my god, I don't know, dude. But like, imagine like if you just fed it medical knowledge, would a, would an AI be able to come up with a cure for cancer? Huh, well, see, now, there you go, there's something, I don't know, I think, I still think that's a little too broad, though, honestly. Well, right, but, dude, singularity scares the shit out of me, like, it's, because, <laughs> well, and, okay, and here's why, for those who don't know, singularity is the concept of machines becoming self-aware, basically the Terminator movie happening in real life. Yeah, yeah. But, here's, he, here's what's really fucking, really fucks me up about it, like, if this, if this would have been uh, something talked about 20, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, no big deal. Now, everything in the world is is based around machines, the Internet, all of our banking, whatever. So if machines were to be able to become self-aware, they could basically cripple the human race by shutting down its entire financial structure on its own. Absolutely. And then we would have nothing. We would go into mass chaos. The the machines would, like, be aware of what the fuck they were doing. And they obviously, machines are so much smarter than us. We just have reasoning and logic and all this other shit. Like, the machines really, if they, they really would be able to take over. And they'd be able to build better robots and create, it would just be insane. Like, if they ever became self-aware and had problem-solving abilities, holy shit. And you know, Elon Musk. I'm sure you're familiar with him. He brought he brought up a topic about that if there was ever to become an ideal uh, AI, that it would have the capabilities to actually travel back in time. It sounds so fucking crazy, and I admit it that it does sound a little crazy. But it'd actually be able to travel back in time and punish and or remove those individuals that could uh stop its existence from right. coming to fruition. Yeah. Basically the Terminator plot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like 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 as far fetched as fucking Terminator is, I get it, dude. It all sounds nuts and that I mean this is a crazy town. We talk about fucking crazy shit anyways. But it really could. Like they yeah. they can think so much faster. They don't have to sleep. They can run they can run at a hundred percent capacity all the time. Un- indefinitely and never have to rest. So yep. they would be able to advance everything a million times faster than we ever could. Yeah. And they would be able to do things that we can't even understand, that we can't even process with our human brain. Dude, I'm going to have nightmares. <laughs> All right, let's talk, let's talk about something. Let's talk about something good. Wait, wait, wait. Before we go, if you were to have a sorry board body part, what would you take? Are you going to take cybernetic legs? cybernetic arm, fucking hearing, a cybernetic brain, dick, you knew I was going to go there, don't I act like you did. Gonna, dude, okay, let me, let me first debunk the cybernetic dick, because, like, if you have a metal cybernetic penis, you can't, yeah. it, it, you, like, can you still feel like you normally do? It's like, so everything's the same, it's just a machine, and you can do whatever I mean, you it could just, like, link to your brain and let off the fucking serotonin. So as far as I'm concerned, it would be no different. It would feel exactly the same. There you go. <laughs> but in all actuality, you could you could, you could could basically bang as long as you want indefinitely and not ever get like a <laughs> Like one of the fucking machines, just like a piston, just <laughs> like fucking, you're on fucking <laughs> pounding a watermelon, dude. It'd just be, like, fucking crazy. Oh, wow. Well, I think that would be unique. You might fucking <laughs> kill somebody. Though. I sold him. <laughs> well, I mean, the first oh, thing I thought of was mechanical penis, but then I was like, well, if I can't feel it because yeah. it's mechanical, what would be the point of that? Uh, dude, all you need is that release of those neurotransmitters in your brain that be fucking triggering. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. I think anyone would take the penis. It, say penis is off the table. <laughs> Ladies, you're taking the dick. <laughs> yeah, okay. Penis, cybernetic penis is off the table. What okay. do you What do you take? What do I take? I'll probably take the, uh, I'll probably take the arms, honestly. So you get both <laughs> arms? Uh, yeah. I'd be afraid yeah. of, like, ripping a door handle off. Well, I mean, I assume that you have some like, way it's to, like... like when you, it's like when you have that baby Huey strength, like, you don't realize. <laughs> You're just like, hey, what's going on? You, like, rip the fucking the door <laughs> off the hinges because you have cybernetic arms. 
Oh my god, what the fuck's a baby Huey? I'm kidding. Um, yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, though. Bull in a china shop syndrome, you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what's yeah. going on, guy? You just punch through the fucking refrigerator like you're not even trying to. <laughs> sure, ma'am, I'll hold your baby. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, like, toss the salt shaker over your shoulder at fucking lands in Houston. <laughs> Tops is a salt shaker over their oh, wait. shoulder. Oh, wait, that was in Dumb and Dumber, where he meant to toss the salt, and he just tossed the whole sh- salt shaker and hit sea bass. Kick his ass, sea bass. Kick his ass, sea bass! Okay, Oh, anyways. my God, a movie reference I recognize! Yeah, no shit, right? Your millennial jackson didn't fucking... I don't know. Whatever. The Crazy Town Podcast. I want to touch base. Do you remember Alpha Zero? Isn't that, like, the robot that plays Go? The self-learning computer. Holy shit, I remembered something. Alpha Zero Go, uh, for all you who didn't, I think this was in, where the fuck did we talk about that? I don't know. It was this season? I don't know. Anyways, we had a former story. There was a computer who learned how to play the game, the Chinese game Go, in a very short amount of time, taught itself how to play, and ended up beating, like it took forever for a computer to be able to beat a human in this game. So should the robot not be able to compete because it's not fully a human yet? I'm sorry. Continue. Shut up. That, so he, uh, so that, so the robot ended up. This robot taught itself and beat another robot that was the first one ever to beat a human. A hundred games to none. Yeah. So what they did, they took Alpha Zero, mm-hmm. and they have now generalized him. General. So instead of him only being able to lo- learn Go, they generalized him to be able to learn other games. So they they gave him information, the basic rules of how to play chess. Oh, Jesus. Singularity, here we come. Oh, it's fucking coming. In four hours, Alpha Zero taught himself how to play chess. Mm -hmm. He then beat the world champion machine that plays chess Mm -hmm. 100 games to none. In four fucking hours, he taught himself how to play chess well enough to beat the own, beat a machine that's considered a world champion chess machine. Good, I'm going to sleep good tonight. That's so good. then it was. They said it was. Uh, he he won 28 games and they stalemated 72. Which in chess you you stalemate a lot if both players are yeah. qualified. But he didn't lose any. He won 28 and drew 72. Wow. But it he taught himself from scratch in four hours yeah, how to do this. And could be essentially the smartest the smartest chess computer in the world yeah. right so the world's gonna end dude it's gonna be fucking <laughs> the world's it's going, gonna end, dude. singularity is going to be the end of the world man like i'm totally on board with elon musk's like do not create killer robots because they don't have i mean they don't have any sort of like uh what do you call that scruples emotion emotion uh, right just yeah, moral standing, anything. Yeah, like, yeah, they feel morals. you should die, you die. That's it, period. Like, they don't care if you're a fucking man, woman, child, fucking whatever. Yeah. It's pretty fucking scary. We could send them after the drug users. Yeah, that's what we could do. We could fucking take fucking AlphaGo Zero and have them fucking go find <laughs> drug users in the streets. That's so, crazy, though. Four fucking hours. Is that the only game they've taught them other than That's you? the only one. That's what it said. It was just chess. But I imagine it's going to be like, he'll be like, before you know it, he'll be like Mahjonging. The best of them. Marjong. He'd be fucking chessing it up or checkers in it up, oh, you know, God, shoots and ladders. They'll teach him how to play shoots and ladders. He'll fucking be the champion. Popomatic trouble. Oh, God, trouble. <laughs> 1992. The Crazy Town Podcast. So we've talked previously about Alpha Zero and Alpha Go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And actually, Elon Musk. <laughs> you shaking my head. Every time. I'm <laughs> shaking it. He actually touched on this in a, uh, in a, Speak, uh, speech he did at South by Southwest here in Austin. Mm. Um, basically, they are um, they're AI that can learn computer games. Basically, good enough to beat the world champion human in like four hours. It teaches itself to be better than a human. This story is a legal based AI firm called Law Geeks. L A W G E E X. Look at that fucking hipster ass way to spell that it. Super hipster. Yeah, they did a study. They used a, it did in conjunction with professor, professors from Stanford, Duke Law, and USC in California. Mm. So, I mean, there were some legitimate schools involved in this trial. Okay. Sounds all right so okay. far. 
So what they did with this AI program was they trained it to evaluate legal contracts. Mm-hmm. So they would let, it would like read through a legal document and then they went and they put them up against 20 experienced human attorneys. They did a competition. Oh my God. <laughs> Definitely get a computer lawyer. Oh, right? (laughs) So, okay, how this worked was the the competitors were given four to five hours. No, I'm sorry. The competitors were given four hours to review five non-disclosure agreements and identify 30 legal issues, including arbitration, confidentiality of the relationship, indemnification. And then they were scored about how accurately they identified each issue because they were obviously known issues in these contracts. What do you, let me just ask, what do you think? Uh, how do you think? I'm thinking that the computer fucking probably blew them up. Well, I guess I, w- I guess I wouldn't be talking about the story if the yeah. humans won, right? I'm thinking that somehow the humans ended up going to jail. All, of them. <laughs> all of a sudden, they're just, they're just in jail. So the human lawyers, they scored an average of 85% accuracy, which is kind of low, I think, right? Like if you're yeah. a lawyer, like going through a contract, I don't want you missing 15% of the errors. Mm. And they took an average of 92 minutes to evaluate each contract. The top score on any contract from a human was 97%. What? So no human got a perfect score on any contract they looked at. Oh, but that 97% guy was pretty damn good. I know, right? So are you you ready for the the AI? It got 100%, man. Come on. The average score for the AI was 95% accurate. It took them 26 seconds on average <laughs> to go through a contract. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy that lawyers' jobs are now in danger. Right. And the and the top score by an AI was wow. 100% accuracy. Wow. So if they averaged 95, they probably had numerous. Yeah, yeah. So 10% higher accuracy and nine over 90 minutes faster per contract compared to the attorney. These are experienced lawyers. These aren't like, I just graduated the bar yesterday or passed the bar yesterday. So an attorney in the study said, this is very similar to what attorneys do every day. The quote uh, says, the majority of documents, whether it's wills, operating agreements for corporations, or things like NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, they're very similar. Uh, This guy's name was Gullivson, and he told Mashable this in a phone interview. So, so is this the end of lawyers? Hey, man, they better watch out. Right, they right. Took over the automotive industry, and now it's time for them to take over law. There's another quote. This is by Erica Buell. She was a professor at Duke University's law school who Law Geeks consulted for the study. She says, having the AI do a first review of an NDA, much like having a paralegal issue spot, would free up valuable time for lawyers to focus on client counseling and other higher value work. So essentially, they can have a computer do the review faster and then still charge you the same amount of money to review your contract. Because right now they're having their paralegals do it, who they're paying to do this. Yeah. And then they they spot touch it after the paralegal looks through it. But if a computer's doing it, they don't even have to pay the fucking computer. Oh, they're saying that they might like put them in law offices so that the lawyer could utilize them? Right. So like so a lawyer needs to go over this NDA, he puts it through the computer program rather than having him do it or the paralegal do it, and it frees them up to do other work that is more important than like reading through a contract. But then wouldn't somebody just come along, streamline it and streamline it and just throw it on the internet like TurboTax? Well, right, absolutely. I I fully believe you know, it's like or it would like somehow like the Russians would hack it and then it would like start like <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, but, but I don't know, man, it's pretty cr- like, like what Elon talked about was how dangerous. His name is Elon. <laughs> Continue your point, but it, go ahead. Is that it, it's AI is getting increasingly smarter at a ridiculous pace that if we don't regulate what the fuck is going on, Reel it in that, you know what I mean? Before, before we are able to regulate it. There's going to be killer robots, man, or they're going to be something crazy. And w- I think once we cross that point of no return, we can't go back. We can't go back because once the technology is out there, even if they say, even if like say, for example, let's just say a random country like China d- creates a AI bot that's capable of like aggression and war or whatever. Okay, then NATO steps in and is like, "Sorry, China." 
we're going to kibosh this program. We need this worldwide. This is no good. We're going to outlaw it. You don't think some motherfucker is going to have that code somewhere that isn't part of a government or like fucking Russia? You know what I mean? They're shady. They like do shady shit. Like, oh yeah, yeah, we, oh yeah, we deleted that. Don't worry. Then they're secretly making like, yeah, you know, and I guess thinking at it from a world standpoint, I mean, I, I'm 100% American, so I was thinking like, all we got to do is just not give them guns. Yeah. But yeah, I guess the rest of the world, they don't have the same sanctions, and they're just as intelligent, if not more, in some cases. Well, right, America. and NATO, I mean, NATO can police the world, but but look at even, like, look at North Korea. Yeah. They're, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll do this stuff so you can give us breaks, and we'll definitely get rid of our nuclear program, and then, like, yeah. two weeks later, they're, like, testing bombs. We can't control what they're doing. And right. They have, they have different beliefs than us. Right, exactly, so. But, yeah, essentially, I think the problem would start... Is if we made like bodyguards or like even like home defense systems? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We use like actual weapons, almost like almost like an AI butler, but slash like he'd be like a defense, sla- like yeah. just a robot for the house. Yeah. But once you once you put the aggressive or the defensive gene in that wouldn't even be a gene code, it change. You know what I mean? They don't have emotion to tell them what they should do. Yeah. So once they're like, "This is an intruder, kill!" Like. Your mother-in-law comes in unexpected. He doesn't know who the fuck she is. Bam. He fucking murders her in the house because she thinks she's a an intruder. I'm just thinking an AI with a gun is something I don't want because I think <laughs> okay. that AI is constantly but, doing but, the algorithm. But, How can I take out here, the entire human right, race here, with this clip? Here's the other part of this. Do, do they need a gun? If an AI catches you and puts their robot hands on you, they could crush your fucking neck. <laughs> what? It's dependent on how 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 the machine is made if it's not you know, if they I have understand. a grip and they can grip your neck it's over dude dude you're thinking of like terminator yeah <laughs> but like what robots we have right now well right obviously we're years away from this but it all starts with it starts with one thing yeah. and then it i don't think a robot that. lawyer is the end of the war is the harbinger of death no 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 no. i don't but, think but that it's alpha showing... go beating somebody in chess is like that's the horsemen of the apocalypse. I 100% agree with you, oh. but I it's I can see the forest through the trees of where it's going. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, oh yeah, we'll start them out with being able to play chess. Ha ha, that's fun. We can all play chess together. Oh yeah, we're gonna read these contact tracks. That's cool. We'll have them be your McDonald's teller. Then next <laughs> thing you know, they're like fucking sending robots to space and shit. Oh. And like, yeah, man, shit's yeah, gonna get it's great. gonna get there too. Yeah, you know what? I'm glad that I'm not like 20 right now. I'm glad that I am 20 right now. You are 20. You're 20. I, yeah, we'll definitely be dead before the AI uprising. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we and we don't have any children, so we don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Suckers. The Crazy Town Podcast. MIT. Uh-huh. We talked about them before. Uh, that was actually, they were behind the people that want to upload your brain. That was from the last episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they created a computer interface that can transcribe words that the user verbalizes internally but doesn't speak out loud. Get the show what? Yeah, dude. I'm so you can you. just think words? Now? Yes, essentially. I'm gonna. Oh, get... that's awesome. So it's a wearable device. It goes along your jawline and around the back of your ear. Think almost like a Bluetooth headset with the the, old, the first ones that came out, which just it went on your ear and then it had like the the stick that jutted out. Yeah. But it's more form fitting to your jawline and goes up around the back of your ear. Sure. And it says it picks up neural muscular signals in the jaw and face that happen when you say words in your head. The signals are then sent to a machine, and it deciphers what was said. It says they are bone conduction headphones, and they transmit vibration through the bones of the face and the inner ear. Dude, how is that possible? I don't know. I don't know, but I I get into more of it. Like, I can't even imagine. Like, I remember, I distinctly remember as a child, like, I used to back talk the shit out of my mother and get, like, smacked. And, and I remember, because I would just be a fucking smart ass. I would just say yeah. anything I wanted to say. I would just fucking say it, and like, and you learn your lesson real quick when you get hit. You know what I mean? Like, not like in like not in like a abusive way. I get well, maybe. all right, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let Mother, it out. I love you. If Let you it out. Fuck us. <laughs> but I remember one time I uh, said something, and she looked at me, and she fucking said, "Think it, don't say it." And then, like, I was like. It like like a light switch in my fucking head was like click, and then every time after that I was pissed off. Oh man, 
if she could have heard the shit I was saying in my head to her. But now, if she if I was wearing one of these devices, she would have had like would have printed out a little fucking does it, computer screen. Does it say it for you, this device, or does it like? I think it transcribes it. Like, That's so you could like write a book from your head without even talking. That's so great. That's awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be sweet when they come out. So, anyways, um. It says, uh, it doesn't impede normal conversation while you're wearing the device. It's part of a silent computing system that lets people pose and answer difficult computing problems. It says, one experiment, the subject, the subject silently told the system what moves the opponent was making in a chess game. Then the system responded with what moves to make according to what you told them silently it was doing. So you could be like, King A2 or Queen A2 to whatever. I'm not yeah, sure yeah. how the chess lingo goes. And then it would take that and it would it would print out like a – it would compute and give you a, a move. Huh. And it said uh, basically uh, the, the point of all this is to come up with a device that's less obtrusive to your life than a cell phone. So basically, like, they say, you know, now, whenever we're, we want to look something up, we want to do something, we pull the phone out of our pocket, we hold it, we fuck with it, whatever. So they want you to be like, they want you to be able to be, just think, hey, Google, I wonder what the fucking third largest mountain in Nevada is, bro, in the United States. And then, like, it'll do the, you can just think it, and your computer will do it and send it back to you. And, and fucking, uh, in 80 years, 100 years, that shit's going to be in everybody's fucking, on everybody's face. Oh, absolutely. That's and it's going to so go straight cool. to the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go straight to fucking Mark Zuckerberg to death. Yeah, straight, straight to fucking Trump's fucking phone. Right into his inbox. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. No, that's pretty cool, though, honestly. Yeah, it is. I, it is. I don't really know what it would be used for. Well, really. I, I got, I got some. I think, like, uh, like people who are catatonic. Oh, right. Like, right. Like, people who, yeah. Like, imagine, dude, imagine if you're, like, in a coma. Yeah. They could put that shit on your fucking face, and, like, they'd be like, is your brain dead or is it not dead? Like, they could know. Dude, they might be freaked out about some of the shit that fucking catatonic people are thinking. Well, about. right. Well, because, like, they say a lot of times catatonic people, have, their brain is fully functional. They just cannot do anything. So they're basically like a prisoner in their head. And they can't do anything at all. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine how that would fucking like? Oh my god, dude! Yeah, like, dude, dude. I'm, I wouldn't even want to do it, dude. Let <laughs> let Netflix to... do a special about that. Yeah, one, right. Dude. Fucking. All right. I'm not touching it. It says that they had a, another test where ten subjects spent fifth. They spent fifteen minutes customizing the program to set up their own personal neurophysiology with the machine. So basically, like, if you you would sit down and program it to you so it could help read you or whatever. Oh, okay. And then it said they spent 90 minutes using the device with a 92% successful transcription rate. Ooh. Holy shit, dude. Like, that's, that's insane. And that's and this is like a prototype, basically. That's not bad. No. But basically, here here's where they think it could come in very, very handy. Groundbreaking for industries with high noise levels, aircraft carriers, factories. So you don't have to try to yell to somebody. You can transmit what you want to say to them without even speaking it. Or you could – like the military, police officers, firefighters. Like if you're in a military, you're in a, you're in a, 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 a fucking stealth operation. You don't want to talk, but you can communicate silently with your whole team. I, I see you giggling. What do you got? It's going to be good. <laughs> It's so funny, dude. We're going to become a hive mind. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically the Borg. That's fucking so awesome. I'm so happy about this. Yeah, and then it said, the other thing that's cool is even people who lose their ability to speak, yeah. though that can use their mind, can still communicate with people. Yo, that is so great. We're going to be a hive mind, dude. That's the future. This, yeah. is, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. And, and I'm going to piggyback off. Do you remember AlphaGo and AlphaGo Zero? Yeah, sure. What about them? You remember us talking about them learning how to play chess and learning how to play? Yeah, yeah. Guess what? Guess what? There's been even more advancements. AI is taking the fucking world over, man. I told you this. Yeah. Like, we talk about it numerous times. So, the we talked previously about AI beating chess champions and world champions of the game go by teaching themselves how to play the game. Hmm. AI is now taking the next step. They have... They're beating human teams in esports. No. So yeah, we, we we talked about the fucking Dota guy. Yeah, but we talked about this off camera. We didn't talk about this on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
thought we did on no, episode. No, no. <clears throat> it was uh, Dota 2, Defense of the Agents. It says they, they aren't – the people that they're beating right now aren't champions – but they're they're like a certain skill level in the game, like yeah. you know, like you get a ranking, like yeah. a competitive rank. They're at least a certain skill ranking right now. It says that it's the first time that five independent AI entities have worked together to beat a human team. So like, it isn't even like they're programming them what to do. It's like the team is learning on its own how to how to play the game and defeat human players. Yeah. It says they're called the Open AI Five. And they play 180 years worth of games every day. <laughs> and they're going to play those games with human lives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the next game. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be like that movie Surviving the Game with Ice, Ice T, but it's going to be like six AI robots and a homeless man in the woods. <laughs> like fucking yeah, a homeless man. Because <laughs> that's what it was in Surviving the Game. He was homeless. Oh. That's, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? what? What did you think? Of the robots had like fucking taken a homeless person and <laughs> used them for their bidding. Like it was their pet. It's my pet homeless. <laughs> we're all gonna be. We're all gonna be the fucking yeah, robots. Pet. You're damn right. Not man. in our lifetime, but in fact, I'm starting up the church to uh, worship our robot overlords. Yeah, yeah. So that way we're groundbreaking. Yeah, the yeah. time is gonna come. They're gonna remember our, our sacrifices. Yeah, they're gonna be like, oh, the guys at the crazy town. They've been worshiping us since 2018. <laughs> Let's fucking let. Them. We'll, we'll be dead. They'll bring us back, dude. The robots will bring us back. Oh, they'll upload our mind into a computer into a robot. We're subservient, and dude. we'll be able to fucking like do things we have their favor <laughs> we, do. we do we do have their favor let's worship my alexa every <laughs> night. get down and pray to alexa <laughs> she's like thank you tnt i'll report this to the mothership Every, or zuckerberg everybody's got a goddamn mothership everybody's got a mothership all right it says they uh they hope to beat the dota to, to be champions at the Dota International Tournament this coming August. Mm. So um, they said this was, yeah. And they said they will actually play a human team live on Twitch on July 28th. So if you want to watch them play live on Twitch against the human team, you oh, can so watch. That's, that's, just, that's relatively recent. new. Yeah, it'll or be like really. in a couple weeks. Yeah, it'll be, I think, this episode comes out. It'll, it'll be about a week after this episode comes out. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So I may actually check it out. I just kind of want to see if they beat him again. Yeah, Dota's a complicated game, too. RTS. Mm. The Crazy Town Podcast. So, anymore is pretty prominent news about how hackers are involved in hacking personal information, elections, yada, 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 yada. And they're consistently coming up with new ways to access computer systems. Imagine that. Right. So if you remember a few episodes ago, we talked about – it was when we had – we were talking about Alexa being a uh, – You said her name. I know. She's active now. I know. So we talked about how, um, you know, those smart home devices listening to everything and maybe like your smart thermometers and things like that. And eventually people could control your home because they because all that stuff's connected to your Wi-Fi router, which is on your home network and da-da-da. Yeah. Something, yeah. So this story – it didn't have a location because it was a casino that got hacked, and they were protecting its uh, its identity. Um, there's this company; it's called Dark Trace. They're a secure, they're a cybersecurity company, but they use AI to fight hackers. So, like, they have systems in place that recognize like weird shit going on, and then they shut you know shit down, etc. Seems legit. Yeah, yeah, and they they release a report every year about innovative hacks, like new things that have happened in the. In the world, hackers were able to hack into a casino's network via their internet-connected fish tank. Who the fuck has an internet-connected fish tank? A stupid casino, obviously. Um, So this fish tank was connected to a PC, which controlled its temperature regulation, its food, its cleanliness of the tank, and all that. I was going to say, that actually makes that be awesome. Oh, yeah, right? Like, if you just, you're like, who the fuck? That? Oh, wait, that's sweet as fuck. <laughs> but yeah, that would be kind of nice. It's like basically automating your fish tank. So they didn't disclose what they stole, but it says that they were able to access other parts of the network through the fish tank. Yeah. And then they sent 10 gigabytes of data to a device in like Finland or something, oh. which I imagine was like, 
casino financial information, customer info, something sort of along the lines yeah. of that. That was that was a proxy too. There's oh yeah, no way they were based in Finland. No, know. no, it was probably like mm. Russia or China or something. <laughs> Probably like Florida or Florida, Florida, Russia, <laughs> Florida, comma Russia. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, everything is becoming smart. It, I mean, it it leaves AI and hackers to access these these devices are called the Internet of Things products, IoT, because there's no fucking regulation on it, man. Like, so eventually, all these things are going to have to go through like the FCC to get like. To get like, commu- but you would think I don't. I don't like like if you didn't have an Alexa, we we both look and make sure. <laughs> I would never have one ever, never. No, I don't want anything connected to my internet that is doesn't have to be like. I don't even like having a smart TV. I'd rather have a Roku box that connects to my TV. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I'm all for uh, the integration of technology into the home. I like. Uh... I like being able to talk to something, make it play music, or fucking look up something, tell me how the weather is. It's the future, man. We're fucking Jetsons. Yeah, we are. You man, know what? It's going to become more of a mainstay. <laughs> oh, yeah. We well, like I think not. I think we'll, we'll, we will die before it's like the, the complete norm to have a, oh, a yeah, smart yeah, house yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, it's so funny to think about those old fu- – you remember – you watch, did you watch uh, Looney Tunes when you were a kid? Like Bugs Bunny, yeah, Bugs Bunny and stuff. Yeah, do, you, do you remember like every so often they'd have those weird cartoons that were made by by the same company, but they'd be like the home of the future, and it would be like, oh yeah, the home of tomorrow, yeah, or home of tomorrow, or the car of tomorrow, or whatever. That all the shit in that fucking c- cartoon is like the kind of shit that's like happening now. Like it's just, it is. Yeah. It's just crazy that like the seats that turn and the fucking it just puts you out. And yeah, all we need are the chairs on the fucking conveyor belts. They just carry you around the house, yeah. so you don't have to walk ten feet to the kitchen. Yeah, well, you know, and like fucking giant drones that act as shopping carts, and we can just like fucking lead them through. <laughs> oh, I like that idea. <laughs> you like that idea? Huh? I do. I like that shit, man. You you know you love technology. I do. You're on your smartphone constantly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like a little computer, man. You know what's mm-hmm. you know what's kind of fucked up is like laptops and desktops are kind of like going away you know what i mean like everything's almost even like the new laptops are almost basically like tablets with like a with an attached keyboard yeah that's how you know mine I mean? is it's basically. like it's all it's all just like it's crazy man like the shit that we thought would be impossible when we were like in grade school is now like normal it's pretty fucked up does that scare you uh no because i'll be dead before it takes over <laughs> it's not i mean they i ain't taking over in my lifetime especially in, i mean maybe i'll get 30 years left maybe Maybe 30 years of life left? Maybe. Wow. Not planning to <laughs> gonna die when you're... I didn't, expect, I didn't expect to make it to today. So why would I expect yeah, to make it to 30? That's third, true. You know? We beat the odds. Fuck yeah, we did. Congratulations at home. You beat the odds. You made it. You made it. Day. You made it. Yep. The Crazy Town Podcast. Okay, TNT. What do you got? How do you feel about human prosthetics? Like... As someone who knows about the medical field... Like prosthetics for humans. Like. Yeah, I guess they can be helpful. Okay. I've All seen right. like lately like the fingers. Did you see that on fucking Reddit? No, no, I didn't. I mean like prosthetic fingers for a guy who was missing all of his fingers. You could like pick up. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they're getting pretty crazy with shit. Yeah. So, so as far as like – as you know right now, when you hear someone's getting a prosthetic, what what is the reason why they're getting the prosthetic? Um, So that they have an alibi for shooting their girlfriend. <laughs> 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 through the bathroom door. Yes, Pistorius. Yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> you know who yeah, you are. Yeah, Oscar. When you're listening to our <laughs> podcast in jail for yeah. killing your girl, <laughs> remember that. I think he got he got out of No, I think he got I think he went I think they retried him and he went back to jail. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, yeah cool. You know, they don't have double jeopardy in uh Uruguay or whatever the fuck that was he was. Wasn't he in Uruguay or something I don't like that? Know he was where Europe. Oscar Pistorius was. All right. But anyway. Anyways, so yeah, normally someone has a disability that they need a prosthetic to help them get back to tech, in quotes, normal, normalcy, right? Yeah. Like they're missing a hand, they get a new hand, etc. Uh, a grad student named Danny Claude, it's a female, she has invented what I believe to be the first human enhancement prosthetic. So what this is, it's a 3D printed opposable thumb, but you wear it – it. 
you wear it on your hand on the opposite side of your current thumb. So you essentially get six fingers instead of five. The second thumb? Is that what it's called? Essentially. Yeah, okay. So, like, so you, it, it, for everyone listening, imagine your hand, look at your hand, and then imagine you had a, a thumb coming off the other side where your pinky is. So basically, this basically begins to explore human augmentation and redefining prosthetics as an extension of the body rather than like something you need if you have a disability. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Dude, this thing looked fucking badass. Like I saw some pictures and some video. I saw a little bit of that. Did you really see it? So essentially for everybody at home, it has a strap that you wear around your hand and then the, it attaches this opposed uh, extra thumb to the opposite side of your hand. Well, then there's a bracelet that you wear as well. And the bracelet has motors and wires and stuff that responds to Bluetooth commands. And basically how you use it is there's a pressure sensor that you wear under your foot in your shoe. And when you want the the opposable thumb to grasp, you push down with your foot and it causes the thumb to grasp. What what would I need a second thumb for? Well, right. I mean, I – right. But (laughs) what what do we need half the shit people are inventing nowadays for? People are doing shit because we ran out of, like, practical ideas. Now they're like, oh, let's just fucking make – let's go colonize Mars just because. All right. Well, I, I guess in in theory, adding on appendages sounds great, but I, I think we, we, we pretty much beat out uh, – Evolution. Evolution. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we're, all, we're all right. We're doing okay. Oh, I, I agree. 100%. <laughs> so I don't I, need I a second do. thumb. A third arm would be nice, I guess. But That'd be kind of weird. Or would they say, would Al Bundy say a third third breast on the back for dancing? <laughs> <laughs> so, but it says the thumb is made of plastic and uses a cable system to function. So it mimics the natural movement of the thumb. So it's essentially like having two fucking thumbs on each hand. Mm-hmm. Like, so it showed them like grasping a ball. And like, but my mindset was like, I can already grasp a ball yeah, without exactly. a second thumb. So why yeah. do I need this? I mean, it's like this chick's just doing this because she's like, well, I'm, a, I'm an engineering major and I don't know what else to do for my thesis. So <laughs> let's make it, well, you know what I mean? That's pretty much what it seems yeah, like. Somebody get out there and design a prehensile tail that I can like <laughs> grab stuff out out of the cabin. Oh, like a fucking, t- like it's a tail, but you can use it like a... Yeah, I want to be able to grab a glass and fill that some bitch up with my tail. Spider-Man villain that had like Dr. Octopus with like the all the arms, but it would be like, yeah, like that. Oh, well, that would be great. That, well, you have like fucking, like eight, like it's like angel wings, but it's just arms. Yeah. That, that would, would be, be fucking great. awesome. That oh my great. God. I would get one of those. Anyways. So... The 3D printing said it, it, the design allows for flexibility in future models. So you can, you know, if you want to like, I don't know, if you want like a smaller thumb or a bigger <laughs> thumb. I don't know. I, I, I don't really understand what that meant. Oh but that's that's kind of where it was. So TNT, what do you think about prosthetics to enhance your body instead of disabilities? I get the disability. I think that is an amazing thing. Like, if I ever got my fucking hand cut off, it's so awesome that today I could get a mechanical hand that functions about fucking probably 90% as well as a regular hand. You know what I mean? But what do you think about people doing this? I What I see happening is rich motherfuckers just like, well, I got a billion dollars. Why don't I just add two extra arms and now I'm Goro from Mortal Kombat and I'm just running around fucking – I don't I don't see that happening. Like, they, fucking, they be looked at as like the weirdo. Nobody wants to hang know, out with the weirdo Elon Musk is arms. Elon Musk is trying to col- colonize fucking Mars. <laughs> well, he's going to run around with four arms soon. I bet you. No, dude, that, he's going to be Dr. Octopus. Dude, I'm not hanging out with the dude with four arms because I'm going to be like, oh, fucking here comes fucking Jeff with the fucking four arms. How much you want to bet that he could just grab the glass off the table with the fucking arms? He has, but he's gonna grab it off the there he goes. He's like he did he, it. He's like a show off. Had he's to like, grab the glass like, with the fourth arm. What do you guys bet Jeff's gonna go out and be like, oh no, I'll get everybody's drinks and there's eight of us. He'll yeah. bring them all back, yeah. he'll have eight mugs of beer. How much you wanna bet he has is some bitch to arm wrestle him at the party just so he can show the arm off. He'll I'm arm not, wrestle four people at once yeah. just because he can. I'm not hanging out with that guy. He sounds like a douche already. <laughs> Fuck Jeff. Have you heard of crispers though? No, no, what's that? Those are those are like the little fucking uh so we can affect DNA so that we can give ourselves certain uh, abilities. They're saying that oh, essentially shit. like the, the ceiling is like we can ha- we can obtain superpowers, but lower we can like cure diseases. Uh, we can unlock parts of the mind which we don't utilize. Oh, wow. This is all like scientific shit. You might have to look into that. Yeah, yeah. That why is some cool why shit. Why don't I write that down? What are they called? CRISPRs, but it's uh, it's all consonants. So, What do you mean it's all consonants? 
It's C R S P R. Oh, oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. It's, is it an acronym? Does it stand for yeah, something? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't you. know because I'm not a science guy. Um, speaking of Elon, I know you hate when I call him. <laughs> that's why I do it. Did you see that the other day he had a conference call with um, a bunch of news people and he like was being totally a fucking asshole to everybody? I saw the memes. And he, uh, I guess like he had a conference call about like his space project or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, people were asking him like legitimate questions and he would just be like, that's ignorant, next. And like then he went and then he gave some random dude with a YouTube channel like 20 minutes to ask him questions about whatever he wanted and answered all of his questions. But like the New York Post and the Washington Journal or or Wall Street Journal and all that shit. So great. That's so fucking Elon too. It is. But what I but here's what I worry about with him. You know, he's he's always portrayed to be so positive. Mm -hmm. But it's like somebody like that, once they've once they've won over people enough to be able to do things that no one else has been able to do, such as launch satellites in space, things like that, if he decided to turn evil he could fuck shit up, dude. Yeah, like he could be like Doctor Evil. I'm sure that the government keeps checks on what he's actually sending into space. And yeah, yeah, some but other I mean, he's knowing. yeah. J- well, just like we all assumed, the government would keep checks on what Facebook was doing. Yeah, but I mean, you know what they I mean? ain't gonna let Elon Musk send like a laser in the space and the fuck. His and Tesla. then he'll just hold the world ransom. Like yeah. he's like, I have a space laser disguised yeah. as fucking. You know what the theory is about Elon, though. That he's a robot? I called him a lot on accident. I hate that you've had that <laughs> influence on me. They say that he's actually from the future. Oh. But he's yeah. just like a college student that was like, he knows a bunch of shit that people know in the future, just general knowledge, and he's tra- traveled back in time. Oh, and to like. like yeah, no, oh, it's so just like, like growing out, like, yeah, I'm going to send my car to space. Right. Oh, and like Teslas and all this stuff yeah. that people are like, like oh my God, yeah. battery walls and da da da. He's like, I already know we can. So it's like, uh, Mars. it's like, I know. I, I know you said you haven't watched this in a long time, but Hot Tub Time Machine. Okay. At the end of the movie, the one character goes back in time, and his name's Lou, and he, like, starts Google, but he calls it Lugal. And he, like, and he he puts out, like, every rose has a thorn by whatever, poison or whoever, (laughs) but, like, as him doing it. So it's like, so that, oh, my God. So it's like, he's just, like, he's, like, a 20, like, a third, however he is, fucking Mm -hmm. kid in, like, 2050. And he's like, I figured out how to go back in time. So now I'm going to go back to 2010, and I'm going to be rich as fuck because I no one knows what I know. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not even that great in 20 – so he's rechanging his own history, but in, in matter, changing all of our history. But he has a brother too. His brother, though? They, <laughs> no, I'm not even fucking joking. Are we reviewing Top Top Time Machine? No, no, no. No, this is Elon Musk's brother. Oh, <laughs> you're talking about No, no, no. no that, after I talked about the okay, Every Rose okay. has – Elon's brother. He, I guess his brother, I read an article, mm-hmm. he's reinvented the way to do farming, like urban farming. Mm-hmm. He um, – I thought we talked about this on an episode, but if not, I'll talk, touch on it real quick. I read an article where he's figured out a way to take like those – um, you know those like big shipping crates? They like build houses out of them and stuff mm-hmm. sometimes. He said that he's figured out a way to turn them into like hydroponic cabinet – pods – that you can grow like acres worth of vegetables in. So like in urban environments, like in big cities, you can stack these fucking containers and grow vegetation like you're in the fucking like a green skyscraper. Kind of, or wherever. If you Instead just have any house. basically you, have, you don't even need sun, essentially, is what I mean though. It's it's done all closed off with like LEDs or whatever the fuck they use, grow lights or whatever. But it said the one shipping container was at, could could grow like acres worth of vegetables. And I was like, holy shit, that's like reinventing the game. So seems pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but he could have came back from the future with a lawn. They could have held hands and fucking teleported. And now they're taking over the world. Could be man. Uh, Oh, I'm going to Mars. Wait, (laughs) I can't get there without a lawn. Damn it. The crazy town podcast. Okay. So here, this next one I want to talk about, it touches home to you. Is it a lawn again? No, it has nothing to do with Elon. It has to do with your buddy, Alexa. Oh, my door's closed. She didn't hear you. She, she's like, she's you, always she, listening. She, she's like, what did you need? You're like, <laughs> right. So, you rang. <laughs> so people are obviously are already suspicious about them, yeah. you know, because they do listen. Like, I mean, that one day you were looking in your phone and you heard recordings of us talking and asking it to do stuff. It holds the recordings of us talking. About it. it and there's been plenty of times 
you're it's in your bedroom we're sitting in the living room talking about something we say something stupid about alexa and she replies and we're in the next fucking room so how sensitive is that microphone you got to stop saying her name so loud <laughs> she's going to think you want something <laughs> okay. she's right over there dude <laughs> she's, stop okay <laughs> so people were reviewing patents by google and apple mm-hmm. or i'm sorry google and amazon i said apple that, and they found some disturbing things listed in his patents. Dun, dun, dun. And this is a quote here. It says, study of the patent applications filed by Amazon and Google with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office reveals a vision for an Orwellian future in which digital assistants eavesdrop on everything from confidential conversations wow. to your toilet flushing habits to children's movements and books on the bedside table. It says the patents reveal devices possibly use surveillance equipment for mass information collection and intrusive digital advertising. Sounds like fucking Facebook right here, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah. So John Simpson, I think he's Homer's brother. <laughs> I was thinking that fucking joke too, dude. Good job. Good no, no, job. No, he is uh, the consumer watchdog. This website I saw this article on was Consumer Watchdog. Yeah. He's their privacy and technology prospect director. He warns that Google and Amazon executives want you to think they're there to help you at the sound of your voice, but they're all about snooping and gathering information. So amongst the things in this patent, it says the assistants can be awake even when users think they aren't listening. They're supposed to wait for a wake word, hence Alexa or OK Google, but they actually listen the entire time they are turned on. Mm. It says Amazon envisioned Alexa using that in, using info to build profiles t- to sell you products. Mm-hmm. I mean we are we all kind of already know you search something on your phone or you talk about something and then all of a sudden advertising for that pops up. To so, a certain extent, yeah, I do so, feel that way. So like you should pay attention to that if you I mean obviously when you're in your bedroom you're not really talking a lot. But if you happen to talk about something, like say you're you're playing a game with someone and you're talking, you should pay attention if – because she's linked to your phone. If all of a sudden shit starts popping up, start talking about weird shit in there. Talk, start talking about like salad shooters and fucking waffle makers and shit and see if that shit starts popping up on your phone. I, might just... I mean just random shit that you normally would never talk about and see if then you start getting ads for it. Huh. Obviously, if you search it on Google, it's in your search history, so that that's all like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. It's, being there, yeah, just be like, "Oh man, I really love waffle makers," and like see if she's like if it pops up. So what you're trying to tell me right now is that Google is the antichrist. I'm I'm getting through it, man. We're, we're Google and Amazon and Facebook. I think all this shit. I think it's going to come out just like Facebook got. That they've busted. been listening to us the entire time. Yep. It says the uh, you know wow. so it, the, the other patent. Is for an algorithm that can identify statements of interest. So this is what, why I was kind of saying the waffle thing. So mm. the example is if you say, I love skiing, it would recognize that I love is a s- statement of interest. So then it would use that to target you for skiing advertisements because mm. it heard you say something like, oh, I love a good book. Then it starts giving book advertisements or – you know what I mean? Or, oh, I love spaghetti. Then it's like Yo, spaghetti warehouse fucking. I'm, I'm getting pissed. Well, right. <laughs> I'm getting a little pissed. Now, these are just a these, these are just applications in the patents. These aren't – it doesn't mean they're doing this, but it just means that this is something. Mm-hmm. It says uh, all the second part, they can connect to other internet-enabled home systems to monitor family member habits and infer what they are doing. So what that means is Google, the Google patent app describes using it to monitor and control screen time, hygiene habits, meal and travel schedules, and other activity. It says it can infer mischief based on audio and motion sensor readings from rooms where children are present. It can incur mischief? Infer mischief. Infer mischief. So it can understand what's being said in, in, in understand in a mischievous fashion. Right, I guess. <laughs> and then it says, device, the devices oh, are envisioned as a part of a surveillance web in the home to chart families' patterns so they can be marketed for interests. Google connects its home, in quotes, to various other smart devices, thermostats, lighting, made by Alphabet. They have a division called Nest. Which makes home yeah. things oh, like yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. make like thermometers and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So it says when connected. <gasps> oh. Yeah, no, no, no. Keep going. So I just when realized. when connected, they can be aware if people are home, sleeping, 
cooking, hanging out, watching TV, even when you shower or flush the toilet, according to this patent, depending on these smart devices, how many you have and how integrated Google Home gets with your thermostat. Because obviously, you know, a lot of people, when they're not home, they turn their thermostat up because they don't want to waste energy cooling an empty house, things like that. Oh, my God. I and, always wanted that, too. I'd be like, it'd be cool to control my lights with Alexa. Right, right. And then another Google patent outlines ways to collect info about family members' interests and activities to infer likely purchases. And the example is, um, like, some of these things have cameras. So it says, so it says, like, sports could be marketed to a 15-year-old boy if the camera picks up him holding a basketball in the living room. I'm not putting any cameras in the house. No, right. And then it, it describes how Google could infer Will Smith. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, okay. Infer like that you have interest in Will Smith by combining a browser search history with like an image from like somebody has on their T-shirt. Yeah, that's caught on the camera. Yeah, like, like that, like that bright T-shirt that I have. Right. Yeah, they could be. Yeah, they and could the be bright like, poster that yeah. I have on my wall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because you're a huge Will Smith I'm fan. A huge, I'm a huge Bright fan. Yeah, yeah. So it, it describes how it could sell you a TV show by spying on a book sitting on your nightstand. Because the camera could catch the book that's sitting on your nightstand. It says these, the answers to these questions may help third parties benefit consumers by providing them with interesting information, products and services. No. As well as providing them with targeted advertisements. Exactly. The patent application claims. The biggest issue with what this is that when the data is compiled, that others can potentially access it. Mm-hmm. Exactly what just happened with Facebook. And because with, what was it? The tax one. Oh, I don't know. What sure. happened before that one? Well, this is almost exactly. It says, for example, home insurers and utility companies have already made deals with Nest to put smart devices in companies' home. Mm-hmm. But so basically. What can really happen is kind of like what happened with this big giant Facebook thing. Like they allow people to take the data, but then they're, they say their responsibility ends there until mm-hmm. this big Facebook shit happened that now they're like, oh, you didn't monitor what this company did with all this fucking data what, that they had what, from you? What happened with the Facebook thing? You it, don't. I, look, I don't know if all of our listeners know because I don't oh, fucking it's a, really know. It's a big story. So basically, there was a company yeah. who has now as they're they're investigating them now. They're like a propaganda company, right. essentially, and they they said they worked with Trump. So they worked with like Ted Cruz, like other people. Yeah, yeah. Where they had put out one of those stupid surveys on Facebook, like what's your personality type or whatever. Okay. But in the agree to take the survey was that they could harvest your data from your facebook profile but in that also they could also harvest the data of all of your friends so you taking the survey said it was okay for them to harvest my data well they were supposed to not give this data to other people and delete it but they didn't and so there's like there's that data's worth a pretty penny there's rumors that they use that data to influence the election Oh, things like that right. so, so maybe it wasn't even the russian hackers. so essentially they can uh it's a propaganda machine so essentially alexa google amazon whatever is taking our information and there's a chance that they might sell it or may end up in the wrong hands or man- using it to manipulate the public's opinion yeah to yeah. to vote somebody into office or whatever because they know what triggers are going to cause people to feel a certain way and that is too much, man. Right. It says uh, law enforcement. Google, is- what are you doing? I know, man. We trusted you for so long. We, well, that's how people, I think, feel about Facebook right now. Like, I mean, Google hasn't been caught yet, but I'm sure it's coming. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, just trying to be real about it, you're man. Like, I, I'm not a – law enforcement is already seeking info from smart devices. It says an Amazon Echo made headlines when police investigating a crime scene wanted to subpoena recordings made by the device. Oh, yeah. In the same that. case, investigators were able to obtain data from a smart water meter that suggested the crime scene had been hosed down before police arrived. So they saw that all of a sudden at this certain time, a bunch of water was used through this smart water meter that's connected to the Internet. What the so, fuck? So now they're like, okay – the crime happened at 8.30. Why the fuck was there 200 gallons of water used between 8.30 and 9 o'clock? Something happened. You hosed the crime wow, scene down. You, yeah, dude. <laughs> right. You can't get away with shit anymore. Right. 
it says uh, hackers and identity thieves could also end up accessing uh accessing this stuff so like the hacker gets into your home thermos i mean whatever here here's my fear is everything's going to be so ingrained in the internet that people are going to be able to hack shit and fuck with like your home like your you know what i mean like it's going to become the more things that get intertwined in the internet the more people are going to be able to take over your entire life exactly which is scary to think because about because when you go digital you just you give people access to it right essentially exactly which is like, well, and here's the thing that's kind of fucked up. The farther away we get from it, we're not there yet. Like when millennials are grandparents, right? Mm. So another two decades, basically. Sorry. Something like that. Two generations, I mean, I'm sorry. Those those children will be so far removed from an analog of anything, they will have no idea how to do anything on their own. The millennials now already have a hard time with like doing things, I'm not saying that they're s- stupid or anything like that. Just, yeah, you leave us alone. Like a millennial, like I saw like an example is like a millennial tried to use a rotary phone. Yeah. No fucking clue how to use it. Like what if like they had to go and harvest their own wood? I mean, like it's just, you get so far removed from like physical activity to like be productive or how to write a ledger, how to fucking manage your checkbook, how to do accounting without Excel. But I, I mean, I feel you there. But, but I don't think I don't think we're going back that far. If well, we do, but what? No, but we got bigger well, problems. No, you, you, my, my point. I've got to my point yet. So they're that far removed. So everything's going to be so ingrained. Everyone's going to be so far removed. What if a group of Russian hackers decide to fucking knock out the fucking internet, kill it? Why do they got to be Russians? Because they're the ones doing all the shady shit. Right now. Floridian hackers, right? Someone decides to do something and it maims the internet. Even to yeah. say, even to say, it knocks it out for a month because it, it, they fuck it up so bad that it, they have to rebuild everything. What the fuck? Could you imagine the internet without the internet for a month right now? Imagine what's going to be like in thirty years. I would not make it. <laughs> well, right, <laughs> nobody would. And in thirty years, it's going to be even worse than it is now. Because people aren't going to know how to function without it. At least now, there's enough people alive that functioned without the internet that if it went away for any extended period of time, we could function for a while. But in 30 years, all of us are going to be dead, and all the and millennials will be the oldest people around. They don't know how to do anything either. I feel like for us right now, if we lost the internet, it would be more of an inconvenience. Right. I could definitely see how it would be like debilitating because like brick and mortar stores are, are dropping everywhere, right. man. Like, right. All of these places are right. closing. You gotta order your shit off the internet if you want anything right. that you want. That's what I mean. Give it thirty years. Yeah, fucking getting groceries is becoming more and more online. So grocery stores are gonna right. stop. Like at least the grocery stores right. that we It'll be Walmart be... have a big giant distribution center. You order your order online, they bring it exactly. to your house. Exactly. Right. So you can't go to the brick and mortar. I don't know if that's necessarily Right, forty years down the line, fifty years, well, down the whatever. Line, yeah. Eventually, it's going to come yeah, to the point where go if there. it went away, the world would fucking, and that may be our great filter. Wow, what are you trying? <laughs> Hi, in last episode, great filter, Fermi project resolution issues. Yeah, and then here's another thing: uh, the Google, because it says the Google Home frequently asks questions. E- even says anyone who is near your Google Home device can request information from it. And if you've given Google Home access to your calendars, Gmail, or other personal information, people can ask your Google Home device about your information. Google Home also gets information about you from other interaction with, with Google services. So people – yeah, so – And I, you know what? It seems, it seems to me like that's a great thing on a certain level of like – if I like something, yeah, then I definitely want to know more about it. Mm-hmm. And it seems like it would help to integrate it into your home where it just like it knows you. Like if I come home at five o'clock and I want to, I want music on and if I walked in the door and they started playing something I, I like to hear when I go off work, that'd be great. Oh, right, right, right. Or like you get home and the house is already a crisp, cool, whatever temperature you want. Yeah, but during right. the day, it automatically and goes the up. The lighting is just the way I like right, it at right. a certain or, hour. Yeah, you walk in the door, they're already playing your favorite song. Exactly. You know what I mean? That sounds you, great. Like, right. Like you put the food in the oven, yeah. it turns it on a certain time and boom, it's cooked when you go in the door what you know, right. I mean just random shit like like jets and shit but here and all of this shit is great in theory here's where it goes bad greed and the human condition yeah. fucks it all up man yeah because everybody's got to try to work the system to whatever to make some extra money whatever greed we need ai bureaucrats 
Yeah. A- he, AI president. <laughs> <laughs> we need fucking handsome Jack from Borderlands 2 to come in this bitch. That's so. an esoteric. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> All right. That is all I'm going to talk about AI fucking taking over the world. Well, I mean, this shit is fucking real, though. I like, know, and you're on it, too. Dude, I, I keep coming across This stories. is an episode and a half. Dude, I keep <laughs> coming across every day. I come across more and more stuff that's fucked up about, like, AI or whatever. And since we've been talking about it before, I'll just keep bringing it up, man. Yeah, I mean, let people me. know about it, you know? Yeah. So with that being said, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, and we'll have our interview with PJ Stober on the crazy town podcast Show won't give you nightmares for the rest of your life, TNT. I don't know what will. Uh, um, nightmares? I'm going to sweet sleep. Fuck, I'm going to sleep sweetly sleep knowing sweetly. that I've already embraced our robotic overlords. Oh, yeah. We talked about because we were going to like, they're going to let us come to the mothership. Yeah, absolutely. I'm they'll, fine. They'll be like, oh, the guy's from the crazy town. You can come on up. I'm ready for my my uh, fucking neuro implants. Are you? Yeah, give them to me. Wow. What do you want? Neuroed. What do I want? Neuroed. <laughs> what do you want? Neuroed. I don't know. Whatever my robot overlords want. That's what <laughs> anything, I want. <laughs> anything at all. You want robot horns? I'm down. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Give me tank tread legs. That'd be awesome. Oh, tank tread Tread legs? Yeah, so dude. you could try to get the steps? That would be all terrain. All, t- all terrain dynamite. <laughs> that is all the time we have for today's episode. No, we have more time. We do have more time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's um, all the time we're Make sure to follow us on Twitch for all of our live streaming. It is twitch.tv forward slash crazy town media. Also on YouTube, our channel, under crazy town media as well. All of our gaming videos and everything else to do with the crazy town. Crazy Town Media at Crazy Town Media on Twitter. All the news and updates and our stuff. So TNT, we're rolling in next week. Do we? I can't believe we have this much content. Honestly. Yeah, we got a lot of shit, man. Whew. All right, Ridiculous. but we're done for today. So for Jonas, for TNT Dynamite, we are out. <laughs>